Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to SSS Beta. Today is day nine. Today's question is which social media network is your favorite? And it's so hard for me. I feel like I go back and forth. I really love Twitter, honestly. I think that I love Twitter at the end of the day. That's like my OG. I just love it, um, but I don't really love it for like marketing myself as much just because it's more of a personal platform for me. So Twitter is where I get my politics, where I get my news. You know, I talk about personal stuff and then I do share my videos and share some of my content, but it's really more like of a holistic view of me, I feel like. So if you wanna know who I really am, look at my Twitter. Then other days, my favorite social media network is Instagram. Obviously I would say YouTube, but I don't know if YouTube counts. I feel like YouTube's kind of in a league of its own, but Instagram is my favorite social network sometimes. Like I hover between Twitter and Instagram. Instagram can make me feel kind of horrible about myself too though. And I think that there's some studies that say like that's pretty common. It's just, you put your most amazing, luxurious times of life on Instagram. And when you're sitting like on your couch, feeling, you know, not that cute, you know, having a bad day, whatever, stressed out. Sometimes it's kind of like salt in the wound, you know? So I love it, but I hate it, but I love it. <laughs> so today's video, the actual content of the video is gonna be about Instagram because I did a video like this a long time ago, like a few years ago, and I wanted to just do an update. So I am by no means, this is a full disclaimer, I'm by, by no means like a famous Instagrammer or super popular on Instagram or I know everything. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I just wanna share some of the things that have worked well for me and just start a conversation. You know, Let me know in the comments if you guys have any suggestions or tips that I didn't mention because I am always looking to learn and grow. You can follow me on Instagram, <laughs> shameless plug, at a journey east underscore. I post videos, or not videos, I post pictures there all the time. So the first tip that I have is to take good pictures. I mean, this goes without saying, this platform started as really a lot of photographers were on it when I first got on it and I felt definitely not cool enough to be on it. So it's obviously changed quite a bit, but you know, better quality pictures just do better on the platform. Just take good pictures. Um, one of my favorite tips, people always ask me how I get good food photos. So honestly, it's the flat view is the best for food in my opinion. Any kind of like tabletop thing or surface sort of picture, as flat as you can get your phone, the better and just hold it up high and like and then choose the one that looks best. You know, make sure that your camera's in focus. That's pretty easy, just tap on the person and edit your photos. So I use ViscoCam, ViscoCam, I don't know how you say it. I never have known, but whatever. I use that app to edit my photos. And then I also use Afterlight sometimes. I really like Afterlight's um, light leak feature. Like if I ever do anything that's an unnatural edit, it's light leak, just because it's a little bit fun. It kind of looks natural almost in a way. So I do that sometimes. And then I also use Facetune and not in the way that people think. Although I have, I don't really see a problem with it. Like if I have bad skin one day, which has been a lot lately, I don't see anything wrong with smoothing it out a little bit. I personally don't really do that. I've done it before, but I, I don't. But how I actually use it is I use the whitening feature in, in Facetune. So if I take a picture against a white wall or like a, like my walls in my, my house are kind of like a beige color or tan color. Sometimes I'll just whiten them to make me or whatever is in the picture pop a little bit more. Second tip I have is try new features. This is really true for any social media platform, but when a social platform releases a new feature like live, like stories, like um, the albums, the slidey things, they want you to use them for a number of reasons, but really at the end of the day, what they're trying to do is increase their visit time on their site. So they want people to stay on Instagram longer instead of like going to watch a YouTube video. They want you to do the YouTube video on Instagram essentially. So whenever those new features come out, if they make sense for your brand, which they don't always, but when they do, use them. Try them out because the platform typically prioritizes those things in the algorithm. They're going to help you rise up and get your content seen by more people. So for me, I've been trying out Instagram stories a lot lately. I don't really like Snapchat. I've never been active on Snapchat. So this is kind of a nice compromise. Like, okay, people do like Snapchat. People do like these stories, these kind of intimate looks into your life. So I'm gonna try doing it on Instagram instead since my platform's already here, my followers are already here and it's a little bit easier. I don't have to like open up another app. Also Snapchat is horrible for battery life. I feel like it like drains my battery so much. So I've been trying to do stories more often. And then I also love the 
album feature, specifically when I'm working with a brand, because fun fact, you know, when a brand sends you a product, a lot of times, besides just getting your feedback and getting exposure to your network, they also like sending you products because you're creating content for them. So you're taking pictures that they can then, you know, with your permission, hopefully use on their website or use in their own social media strategy and all that stuff. So I feel like the more content you give a brand, the more likely they are to work with you again, or, you know, the better that they're going to think of you. So a lot of times when I do a sponsored post, I'll do an album and pick like my top three favorite pictures and put it in there and give them permission to use them all instead of just giving them one picture. Number three, hashtag strategically. So hashtags are super important. You can use up to 30 of them in your posts, but I don't recommend that you use 30 of them just to use 30 of them. And I also have some recommendations for how you use your hashtags. So first thing, I like to just aesthetically kind of hide them, but I don't hide them in a comment. This is up for a lot of debate. I have a lot of social media managers and experts who I know who advocate for that and a lot who are on my side and don't advocate for it. I personally feel like it's a little questionable and I've seen some accounts get in trouble for doing that or get shadow banned for that or um, just not see as great of results. So I like to keep it in my actual caption, but what I do is I just do a line break. So I do return and then uh, dot, 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 or whatever, five dots, and then I do the hashtags under there. So you can still see it when you open up the full caption, but it doesn't look as cluttered and messy. And I guess with the whole hashtag hiding thing, I don't really get the point. Like, people can still see it in your first comment. You can delete it, but you can always edit your caption if you want to delete the, ha the hashtags as well. And I'm not putting anything in there that's like embarrassing or misleading, so I don't really care if people see what hashtags I use. I don't know. So I just keep them in the caption. Again, that's up for debate. But then also just hashtag strategically. So don't just put like, like for like, because that's gonna get you a lot of likes. Try to really make them niche hashtags. I do a lot of research on this. I mean, not a lot, of, like I don't spend hours doing it, but you know, I go through hashtags frequently and see which ones are active, which ones um, seem like their actual genuine engagement is coming through on them because something like like for like, I'm just using that as an example, as an example, you know, yeah, you might get a lot of likes, but they're not gonna be people who are gonna wanna follow you or who are going to like find value from your account or anything like that. So. I try to go for hashtags that are a little bit on the smaller side, but all obviously big enough to where there's traffic coming through. You know, when you're typing in your hashtag in Instagram, it'll give you uh, the list and it'll show you how many are in that hashtag. If there's like a million, I usually just, I'm like, eh, I'm not gonna bother with that because it's gonna be moving so, so quickly that your photo is just gonna get lost anyway. So I try to go for ones that are in a healthier range, I mean, or smaller. Um, sometimes smaller the better, honestly, as long as it's being active. So yeah, just hashtag strategically. Don't use all 30 if all 30 don't make sense. Use ones that are relevant to your brand, relevant to the picture. Number four, comment. Comment, comment, comment. Now I'm not saying spam, please don't spam. But comment, do real authentic comments. You can like a million things, that's not how you grow your account. You know, when I'm actively trying to grow a brand's account for, you know, if I'm managing an account for a business, I get my comment fingers ready to do authentic comments. And this takes time because you can use automation tools or software out there, but I don't like them. I don't use them for my clients and I don't use them for myself because I've seen them go wrong way too many times. Um, for example, like I've seen a girl who did a very beautiful tribute to her dead father and somebody comment under there like cool posts with an emoji because it's automated horrible like don't do it don't use it it's bad so i just go through and manually comment you can also set up like hootsuite um helps to kind of organize your streams for you so it's a little bit easier to comment but one of the secrets that i do is whenever i tag or check into a place so if i check into detroit water ice i guess we're giving them free free promo today if i check into detroit water ice um post a picture with the location underneath there I will then, maybe not that instant if I'm actually like eating my water ice, but later on in the day, I will come home, click on that location tag and like pictures from that tag and comment on pictures. And I'll spend a lot of time doing that. Like, I mean, 20 minutes or something, like as many pictures as I really find interesting because it just kind of, give, kind of gives you that in and like gives you something in common to talk about. And then they're gonna go back to your account and see that you were there too and be like, oh, um, she must live in Detroit as well. I'm gonna follow her because I don't follow a lot of people from here whatever so that's one little tactic that i like to use the key is only like and comment on things that you actually like and want to comment on because it looks so cheesy and just phony if you're doing that on like every picture only comment on things that you like but comments get so much more 
um, positive feedback than a like because a like is so easy to do. I mean, I just like things all day long. Like, it, they almost don't really mean much anymore. And also, um, just for your knowledge, brands really look at comments almost more than likes now because likes are so easy to buy and to automate and stuff like that. So comments are really what they look for for engagement. When they're talking about engagement, right, a lot of times they're going to be weighting comments kind of on a higher uh, level than just a like and the number of likes that your pictures get. The last tip is DM. Use that DM feature. Slide in the DMs. What is the song? I don't know. I don't listen to I'm not cool. I don't know. I'm gonna just stop. Gary Vaynerchuk just posted a blog post recently. I'll link it down below about how he thinks Instagram DMs are like some of the most revolutionary things that have happened in business recently and how we need to take advantage of them and I couldn't agree more honestly. I see every single DM that I get unfortunately sometimes they're just a nice portal into people's accounts. Um, most people check their DMs on a regular basis and they're a really nice tool for getting engaged and working with people. So use these again strategically. Don't like DM people and be like, hey, follow me. Hey, follow me. Don't spam people. That's so annoying. But if you have something of value to give people. So for example, you know, I think I'm going to try doing a little bit of outreach for my free online course that I just launched because it's free. It's valuable to people. I'm not asking for anything from people besides their email address to log in. So I might do some outreach for that. Uh, just via DM like make sure that's something valuable So yeah, I just think that that is a really good feature to consider if you are looking to grow your business Maybe you reached out to an influencer via email and you haven't heard back and you don't want to be houndy by emailing them again But you know developing a relationship on Instagram might be a nice next step Obviously you want to have a relationship with influencers before you work with them. That's a whole other video But that's one of the things that I help companies do is develop those relationships So they're not just like jumping in but anyway Anyway, DM is a nice way to kind of follow up sometimes um, without sounding too, too pushy. So yeah, those are my five top Instagram tips. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, make sure to leave me a thumbs up and let me know what you liked about it in the comments down below. And that's it for today's VEDA video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. I post videos every day for the month of August and I'll be posting a new one tomorrow. So don't miss it. See you tomorrow. Bye. All my favorite photographer friends are on this platform. Sorry, I thought that I saw a bird in the window. Sorry, that was awkward. Shut up, car. Shut up.